Second Chronicles 20:17. It says here, "You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, who is with you." And then he goes on to say, O Judah and Jerusalem, and do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. For the Lord is with you. Church, it is up to us, and you're being commissioned to position yourselves. Say, I'm going to position myself and I'm going to issue the commands. You've got to position yourself and you must issue the commands. This is the body of Christ. We represent Jesus Christ. He says, I want you to position yourself right here in the battle where it seems, where it seems like it's so fierce. But I also want you to remember, positioned, you're going to issue. You're going to issue the command. You're not going to just stand there and watch. You're going to stand there and be. You're going to be who God's called you to be. But he's called you to be a light in this dark world. He's called you to be on fire where there is cold, just, there's just damp and cold and there's no life, but he's called you to be the life bringer, life bearer, right? So position yourselves with, that means that you've got to have eyes to see. And in the scripture, it says, you will not need to fight. We know that the battle is the Lord's, but we must be in the battle. That's why we're positioned in the battle. And in that battle, God says, I want you to open your mouth and issue the commands for the commands that he gives you, that you speak out, are the commands that are going to defy the enemy assignments. Dropping those assignments that have hooked you, that have grabbed you, your loved ones, that have come against you, they've put all this yoke upon you, but tonight the yokes are being broken. Because it is the anointing that breaks the yoke, is it not? And the anointing is holy. The anointing is holy. Amen. Like what you see displayed, this is holy. This is, this is pressing into the lover of our souls. And when we press into the lover of our souls, he says, I have more for you, so much more for you. But you can't go in the natural man. You've got to stay connected to the vine. You've got to keep pressing in. You've got to keep pressing in. You've got to know that I want to fill you with that oil so that you overflow. You've got to know that I've anointed you, every one of you, anointed by the living God. And that anointing is holy. If it's holy, then you must know how to use it, how to walk with it. It's not something you flippantly just throw around. Am I making sense? Are you following me this evening? So, so we walk in a way that honors the Holy Spirit by being sensitive to him. So when he says, you will not need to fight. He, say, he says, you're not going to be, you're, you, need, you won't need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves. I want you, can everyone stand up for a moment? Stand up for a moment. Because if you position yourself, now I want you to realize something right now. I want you to think. I want you to say, okay, if I was to walk into, if I was called for service right now, if you were called into a battle, a real, real life battle right now, you were called, you were clothed, you've got your armor on, okay? How would you be standing knowing you're going to go face that enemy? How would you be standing? Would you have your, would you have your shoulders rounded? Would, would, would you be kind of like chewing gum and ha hanging on one, one hip? How would you be standing? The word says, position yourselves. I want to see everyone positioned. I want you to position yourself. I love it. I love it. Stay in that position for a moment. I just want to look at this. You guys are awesome. Like we've got some that are positioned in praise, some that are positioned with weapons, Th this kind of weapon, this kind of, you know, what do I see over there? I, I, what did you do? Oh, she's ready to punch. She's ready to fight. I see, woo, we're positioning ourselves so much. We may have just knocked something out of position. <laughs> Hallelujah. So here's the thing. You know why we all took, cho chose a different posture like that? Because we are all made in the image of God. We're created equal. We're, we're individually made and we're unique, right? We're unique in him. That's why every one of you took a slightly different posture. Because we all have a place. There's a position for all of you. And we are all in this battle. God has anointed you. The anointing in you is going to produce the yoke-breaking power through you. You've got to know that. 
You've got to know that. You've got to know that the anointing that God has given you, and, and it's going to be different from mine. It's going to be different from my husband's bills. It's going to be different from every, but it's yours. Say it is mine, and I'm not going to try to walk in someone else's anointing. I'm walking in my anointing because that's the only place that I'm going to actually reach the heart of God and do the will of God. Right? So you need, you, you will not need to fight in this battle, but we are positioning ourselves. Amen. So when you position yourself, you're speaking loud and clear. You're speaking so loud and clear just by the position you take, just by the posture that you have, just by the facial expression, just by the anointing you carry, just by the confidence you carry. You're positioning yourself just without a word. Do you hear me? so powerful so powerful that you hear and then he says stand still and see the salvation of the lord who is with you the lord is with you so we're going to stand still and see the salvation of the lord his do not fear and don't be dismayed for tomorrow you're going out against them tomorrow for the lord is with you the lord is with you hallelujah 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 so i want to get right to the word that god gave me for you all you may be seated the word that was you are my remnant. The Lord wants you to know that he has, he has his church and not just those that are in this church and not just this church. There are others, but God has his remnant and a remnant is something that you find after a disaster, after trials and heartaches and after a lot of pain after a lot of difficult circumstances, a, a rem, remnants are what you find after the devastation. Amen? Amen? But God said to me, I want you to tell them that the, these people and others too are my remnant. You are my remnant. We have, we're, we're, we're at the almost about the eight month mark now, or maybe nine, uh, when this whole thing started back in March, when, when it came out so fierce back in March. And God wants you to know you've been standing. You have been standing in faith. You've been walking in faith. You've been even experiencing so much opposition from other people and ridicule and, you know, criticalness and all of that. But God says, I am so pleased with you for you are my remnant and you must know that God always has his remnant. Now we know the story of, of Elijah when he was getting discouraged and the Lord said, I have I have my remnant. He says, there are 7,000 7, others that have not bowed. They haven't bowed their knee to Baal. They haven't bowed their knee. They haven't kissed Baal. They haven't bowed their knee. They have not compromised. And God says, that is what he sees you as. Somebody needs to get excited in this room and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, I am your remnant. And so are you. Because, you know, I already can see. I can see the, the one that comes and just tries to condemn. Well, that's not you because this is your first time here. So that can't be you. L kick that thing out of here, will you? You got to kick that thing out. That's a lying spirit. It's a lying spirit. God called you here tonight. Does he not know all things and from the beginning? He knew that you were to hear this message. So if you were to hear this message, then this message is actually tailor-made for you because I always ask the Lord. I pray and I ask the Lord, what do they need to hear? Because you know who's going to be here tonight. He knows, right? And so whenever I prepare, that is what I ask him. If you're wondering where this is at, 1 Kings 19, 18, he says, I have reserved 7,000 in Israel. All whose knees have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. God has reserved, and he always has his remnant. He has that he has helped, equipped, spoken to, and they've listened and set them aside, right? For such a time as this. Second Chronicles 16, 19. We're going to put it up there. Second Chronicles 16, 19 says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong. The eyes of the Lord are, they go throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. That means God is passionately pursuing after you because you're passionately pursuing after him and he passionately sees you he sees he knows he's equipped you he's called you his own and he says you're my remnant but he's strengthening you because 
because it may seem like, oh, we're at the end. We're not at the end. We are not at the end. It may seem like, oh, well, the elections are next week. We're at the end of this battle. Well, maybe that one little battle, but there's more. And God is saying, stand up, position yourselves. Don't think that it's time to check out. God is equipping, he's equipping you, training your hands for battle, your fingers for war. He's training you. He's training you to stand. He's training you to have faith. He's training you to have that yes in your spirit when maybe others around you are running with a no. Come on, does anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah, well, that yes in your spirit. And that's what we, that's what God has put in. He has put this in. I want to go to, back to the remnant. I want to go to um, Romans, Romans 11. Because, you know, it was in the Old Testament, 1 Kings 19, but it's also talked about in, in the New Testament, Romans 11, 3 through 5. And it says, Lord, they have killed your prophets and they've torn down your altars. And of course, this is re referencing, you know, Elijah and the story in, in, um, in uh, 1 Kings 19. But right now we are in Romans 11. He says, Lord, they have, they have killed your prophets and they've tore down your altars and I alone am left. Have you ever been there? Where sometimes you just feel so alone, like you feel like, my gosh, I feel so alone. Lord, I've, I feel so utterly alone. And I think if everybody was being honest, I think everybody could say, I've, I have been there. I think we've all been there from time to time, right? At certain points of our walk. But... But the Lord is with us. We know that. But sometimes you need to encourage yourself. And other times you need, you need the body to encourage one another. That's what the body does. So it says, Lord, they've killed your prophets and they've torn down your altars. And I alone am left and they seek my life. But what does the divine response say to him? I want you. What is the response? He says, I have reserved myself. Who's done it? He has. I have reserved myself. 7,000 men who have not bowed their knee to Baal. Amen. Even so, at this present time, there is a remnant in place. Amen. So Tuesday we have our election. And we've been praying. We have been praying at every service for a long time, for months. And we are, we're at this place now where the next time that we meet, the elections will have already taken place. I want you to know something. We stand in faith and we believe God's choice for that office, presidential office, right? But I want you to remember, Jesus is still Lord, always Will, always was, is, and will be, right? He is still on the throne, correct? Amen. So our confidence is in Christ, not a man. Amen. Not a man. Even, even if your choice gets elected, our confidence is not a man. It's not in a man. God can use the most unlikely person too. You know that, right? But we are believing in faith. We're believing in faith. We've been standing. We've been decreeing the word. And we're going to do so again here in a few moments. In a few moments. But I want you to know you are not of that, of that caliber that would shrink back. Amen. Whether it be the elections or whether it be something else. You are not of the caliber that would shrink back in fear. Because God has charged you and said, Position yourself. Position yourself in this battle. Your battle might be in your very own family with your own children, trying to raise them up or trying to bring them back to the faith, trying to speak truth and life. Maybe you have someone that is addicted. Maybe your battle has something to do with a, you know, someone in your family in that way. Maybe your battle isn't that at all and your battle is something else. Your marriage, your health, who knows? But we all know that God is with you, mighty warrior. Uh, woman, lady in the back with you, what is it? Orange? Yeah. Yeah. Could you just stand up? I just feel like the Lord just wants to just minister to you. I'm just going to stand right here. I'm not even going to go back there. But yeah, just lift your hands up. Father, let the wind of your spirit so fall afresh upon her right now. Lord, there's so much heaviness. Lord, remove the heaviness. Lord, remove the heaviness. Yeah, I command the heaviness to come off of her right now. In the name of Jesus, 
it comes off right now. Lord, thank you for opening up her eyes right now. Lord, let her see, Lord God, what is not visibly evident, but it is there in the spiritual realm. Let her see it before she walks out of this room. Give her faith. She's going to be able to pray exactly what she sees in the spirit realm. She didn't see it before, but she's going to see it now. Take it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Wow. Can everybody just extend their hands, please? Uh, we're going to just lift up her grandson. So, Father. this woman and her and the faith that she has lord in coming down this journey and coming she didn't even know where we were but lord you led her here so i know lord this is a divine appointment tonight and i thank you that we shall see the fruit lord god and she will see the fruit we'll hear about it of our prayers together the prayers of the saints in jesus name amen amen that's beautiful uh, amen no wonder you were highlighted to me hallelujah Oh, thank you, Father. All right, remnants of the Lord. Remnants of the Lord. And uh, there's just one other thing I'm going to tell you. And, um, and then I was going to tell you right before we started worship. Um, and I'll just tell you now. Because our, our life is really should be an expression of worship, right? Worship is not just singing. We know that. Worship is what we do with our lives. Worship is living in obedience to the Lord. Worship is, is speaking kindly when you would rather react Worship is, worship is loving when you would rather just avoid, <laughs> right? Worship, worship is, is, is being the hands and feet when you rather just pretend like you didn't see any of that at all. I didn't see it. I didn't hear it, right? So wor worship is really doing the will of God, right? Like Jesus, right? So I wanted to say that because here, when our songs, your song, so I'm talking about actually singing now, okay? Because I don't want people to think worship is only singing, but... But, say, but, but your song, 
The song that comes out of your mouth, okay? The sound that comes out of your mouth, okay? When you lift up your, your voice and you start to praise, when you let that hallelujah out, the song that comes out of your mouth sets an ambush, right? And the enemy is totally destroyed and defeated. And you've got to know that when you come into worship, and, and, it could, and sometimes it's loud, like your, your worship could be loud, and sometimes it's, it's quieter, but it has nothing to do with the volume, but it has everything to do with the power of the Holy Ghost coming through you because you're saying, Lord, use me. Here I am. Lord, use me. Here I am. And then the power of God sets the enemy to flight. It ambushes the enemy, right? And so your sound, and in 2 Chronicles 20, 22, it says, now, when they began to sing and praise, when they began, when they began, when I begin, when you begin to sing, when you begin to praise, the Lord sets an ambush, an ambush against your enemies who had come out against them and they were defeated. Oh my gosh, that scripture right there, come on, that can preach. Second Chronicles 20, 22, when you opened your mouth, when you opened your mouth, when you let the sound come out of your mouth, when you let the song of praise come out of you, when you did it, not when someone else, when you, I want you to know and I want you to own your own sound and the power behind it, the power behind it. There is a power behind your praise. That's why I'm always telling you, open up your mouth and sing. Let the high praises come out. Come on, start singing in the spirit. Those of you that, you know, come here regularly will know that I'll do that in worship because I know that there is a sound that when that sound comes out of you, and then when the sound comes out of you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and collectively, can you not see those demon spirits just shrieking and going, no, because it's coming from the north, south, east, and west. It's coming from the right. It's coming from the left. It's coming from everywhere. It's coming from up. It's coming from down. And they, they realize the sound is destroying them because the Lord sets an ambush. And it says he defeats them, defeats them. So it's powerful. So, so I, I want you, before we see you again next Thursday, I want you to sing. I want you to shout. I want you to know God is with you. I want you to know you are his remnant. I want you to know that the remnant is that small group, but I'll tell you, small but mighty. Gideon only had 300 men, but God didn't look at what he did with Gideon. David had his 400 men, but look at what God did with them. Jesus had his 12 and look at what God did with them. Come on. We don't have to have this huge massive army. You have a massive God. You have a massive God. Amen. 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 We have a massive God. Our hope and our confidence is in him. Thank you for listening. For more information, please visit our websites at Kathy Coppola Ministries at www.kathycoppola.org. You can also visit us at Mighty Wind Broadcasting Network TV at www.mwbn.tv. God bless.